Mm. All right. Let me mute this here because I think it'll pick us up while we're talking. Um, yeah, some cool stuff in there. Um, I guess when maybe like improvising with people you've never improvised before, like, and I guess having an assortment of instruments, how, like, how do you negotiate? I mean, I guess you you came in strong, like you had an idea, and you 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 came in strong with an idea. But how do you like? How do you relate to the multiple instruments, even though they're all sort of blown instruments, but they're, you know, they're, they're different and they have their different characters and usages. Mm. Like, do you see an idea through? Do, do you feel like, okay, this would be a good time for that instrument and you have to kind of logistically stop and go, you know, how do you negotiate multiple instruments is the, the short version of that. I think I was just responsive to you uh, because maybe there was a moment where you changed something. Mm -hmm. You decided to change something and then... I don't know what happened, actually. <laughs> I just felt it made sense yeah. for it to develop somewhere else. Because there was so much resonance and harmonics like this. And so I think maybe there was a moment where I felt it needed to have more, like more and more of this sound, right? this metal resonance sound than yeah, it would, yeah. because it's quite soft. Um, and I think I was already thinking about this when you were beginning the um, the effects. Yeah, like yeah. The, um, because some of some of this is like my own my own bias around my instruments. Like, what is for what? Yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, sometimes this feels so much more natural than than this. This feels more like I'm gonna yeah, yeah. throw a knife <laughs> into something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's hard to avoid the fact that this is resonates in a specific way. Yeah. Um, but I think I was interested in developing the the the, the quality of the resonance, and yeah, so that's yeah. why I switched to this one. I think. Yeah, and I think it didn't mesh really well together. Like the combination of, I guess, the really bright articulation you can get. Yeah. From like the the metal flute versus the, the plucking. Yeah, yeah, and the kind of glitchy sounds I had going on there kind of made a organic and inorganic hybrid that was like kind of bright and, and sort of abrasive together. It's so, so was... nice to talk about it right after. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess because of the, the nature, like the materials involved, so like the wood or bamboo or... Yeah, bamboo. Yeah, bamboo versus, I guess, silver or whatever. Yeah. Metal. Like they have different sonic characteristics, but also not surprisingly... Um, this comes across in the sound, but like the the kind of language and the embouchure and how how the even just the sort of attacks that you can get on it are yeah. just fundamentally different. Doesn't so it, it sound more wet? Yeah, time? yeah. I mean, even if you had like a, I, I would imagine I don't know, but like an instrument shaped like that that was steel or mm. or silver or whatever, like it probably wouldn't because of the the techniques that you have available to you on it. Because yeah. I think you play straight down it as opposed to across the. I, I Actually, they're both, they both, uh, they're both across. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, that, that's what makes it so hard, hard to play this instrument. Hmm. It's so fickle. <laughs> but, but I agree with what you're saying in terms of um, materiality or like the, the, the way the tongue can hit. Yeah. Because this one, yeah, because the tongue here is like, you know, it's always used to wet this part of the embouchure, like mm -hmm. this mouthpiece. But here, you don't really need to wet it. It's already yeah. so... <laughs> ready for you to put sound over yeah, it, yeah. air over it, yeah. And I mean, this is kind of tangential with that, but like, have you done much playing on, like, I guess, like wooden flutes or like with a wooden headpiece or like uh, ebony or whatever the? Like... Mm -mm -mm. I think I've had I've experienced with wooden piccolos. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But they're also different. Yeah, I mean, that's a whole different. Yeah, register. Yeah. Also, you can only play Sousa. Yeah. Like marching band music. <laughs> Which has, comes its own. <laughs> and then you want to have 10 piccolos on the stage playing yeah, yeah. some march. <laughs> I don't know. So I, don't, I have like a bias against the wooden piccolo because of the, the memories that I have of it. Um, but I think it's still different because it's the, the way I, I'm blowing it. And you know, one time I tried playing the ney and it, it was so difficult because of the position of the, the flute, like having to be like this. And I thought, I have so much to learn. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on yeah. a tangent. No, no, I mean, well, that, that's a good thing with it. Like, but yeah, I have a, a friend, or a couple friends who play classical and improv flute stuff, and one has a, a wooden 
headpiece, mm. and the other one has a whole wooden flute. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that like when I play with them, it's it's quite a different character, but I think not nearly as far as going to something like this. Oh, really? And, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I don't have a great amount of experience with that, but like I, I know that like when I was playing with, I think this was Simon Prince that had a wooden headpiece on his metal body. Um, I mean, he is also a very aggressive and very like very 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 bright player. Um, that it kind of rounds some of that out. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, it's just interesting to think about, like, because we're talking about materiality here, and like the metal yeah. versus the wood, yeah, um, as a kind of material. Mm-hmm. I had so we don't have to talk about this now, but I'm so interested to know what you felt was different his between his fully, if he played a fully wooden flute, with um, what you felt was the difference between that and this bamboo. I can only imagine. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's a. In the context that we were doing it, it was closer to maybe more like a free jazz esque thing. Uh, so like a lot more like it, it was sort of flute language musically, as in like like chromaticism kind of like okay. you know sort of sound world. Um, so it was just a, a timbral difference. This is from memory, so this is like some years ago. That like um, a timbral difference to a similar musical language, mm-hmm. whereas this is. Um, I mean, I think I guess it's is it diatonic or is it chromatic or is it just different. Like the the pitches that you have available, uh, it has its own scale. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's yeah. so like that al- already comes with its own kind of context. Yeah, for and sure. And then I think the way, <clears throat> again, not with a massive amount of experience, the way the sound projects from it, like the sound overall is just a different sound, obviously. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like a, a, a an interesting thing, but yeah, it was just only because we were talking about specifically materiality mm. that I was kind of thinking of how mm-hmm. that would go. Yeah, and going, that's awesome. And going back to the materiality, like, uh, you know, I was curious, I would have loved to keep going with the um, the chimes, the chimes on yeah. your guitar and this sound. But that's more of a typical sound world that we are familiar with, probably. Mm. Uh, because I was really beginning to, and I don't know if I want to do it again. <laughs> I don't want to go into the sound world again, but like uh, these um, hell tones on metal sound with this metal Hmm. resin on the wood and and then there was like the use that you were on these nylon strings but then you know i'm so i think this is there's something happening i'm not processing right now (laughs) yeah Yeah, i think i'll have to think about it yeah yeah the materiality of these things Hmm. i mean it's also it was also the way way you were playing hmm. it was also the way you were playing you were super uh, explorative on everything and um then i think i think i wanted to keep playing yeah <laughs> sorry yeah uh-huh. yeah i mean related to the materiality like it's something that i thought up when i was coming up with the idea for sort of this setup because I, I wanted to do something kind of different and i wasn't sure what you were going to play so i wanted to use because i don't think I've, i don't know if i've played nylon string on um one of these before but i wanted to have kind of organic mm-hmm. sound mm-hmm. but then specifically with Mm. on the glitchier side of the effect. So like most of the processing that I have is not organic and, and much more on the artificial side of it to really have that. Um, it's different and it's not like an analog digital thing, but uh, nylon versus glitching CD player are, are very different sound worlds. Mm-hmm. And, and almost ma- materially, but not in physical material. Materially is in like a, a musical context material. Mm-hmm. Um, like we, we don't often hear nylon string guitar mm-hmm. in a glitching context Mm -hmm. because of you know the the sound worlds in which that they operate in so i kind of wanted to to bake that contrast into this sort of set up an instrument and the clock chimes were just kind of a a happy accident and that like they literally arrived this week and then i was like oh they kind of sound nice on the guitar yeah kind of fold that in as well i think it's so cool what you're saying about your decision to do the nylon strings and the um processing because it was such an invitation mm. already, the world you decided mm. to have. I felt very home in it. You oh, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. And yeah, it's not it's not a combination that I've put together before. I've used like banjo with the glitchy sounds, uh-huh. which which is a similar like organicness. Uh-huh. But that that's so it's kind of like a steel string. It's a brighter sound. Whereas this is like a very dull sound. It's almost similar to like the, the bamboo flute. Like yeah. the, the timbres I have available here are inherently dark. And then the glitching is inherently bright because yes. of just how the, the the physics of what's happening there. Yes. And I think I felt home because I, I know the distance. Right. You know? 
That's a good way to put it. And is, do you think of that similarly in terms of like the distance between those instruments? Well, today, this is making me think. Yeah, yeah. About that concept. Which it, makes me think I should play with a lot more people, more often. Because I feel like I'm learning about myself. In yeah, this, yeah. Of course. Um, it's because it's so nice to travel with somebody else from yeah, yeah. that to there. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, it, it, in this conversation, it's, it's kind of interesting to unpack the <clears throat> serendipitous distance in both of our setups, uh -huh. which, which I mean, is intrinsic to, I guess, what you knew you were bringing. And yeah. I kind of thought, but like, so I don't cool. think we thought that parallel, obviously. But it's kind of, uh, there, there's a, a tangent there in terms of like intersecting distances, you know, which is quite poetic, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to create more distance. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, now I think I want to do that and this and see. Yeah. That sounds like an interesting one. Yeah, shall we? Um, do you want to? Should we, yeah. Do we need to talk more? Yeah. <laughs> Are we done? No, no, I'm happy to talk more. <laughs> I mean, actually, on that, I did have a kind of a follow-up question because I think in terms of distance, so in, in, in the context of my instrument here, there's a kind of a material distance and then like a kind of a cultural distance between like what a nylon string guitar projects because mm -hmm. it's used in sort of more folk or classical music, but it's, it's somewhat separated from contemporary mm -hmm. music, um, whereas CD players are... Well, so you can have anything on CD, but it's like kind of a different musical context. Yeah. Um, but they're still... Uh, nylon string guitar isn't strictly Western, but like they're still kind of in a similar cultural world. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think there might be a bigger distance in these instruments, like in terms of, I, I don't know, but mm -hmm. in terms of like your relationship to them, like there's a material distance in terms of like the physical material that they make yeah. and the musical language, mm -hmm. but like there's a cultural distance Mm -hmm. There, yeah, for sure. I mean, we can talk about culture within one country or culture between countries. You know, um, the, the the first song that I learned on this is a song from the 1600s. You know, it's like four or five hundred years old. And this is within this last century. So I think there is a temp, probably a time distance. Um, there was once a time when I decided in my mind that, oh, this is Western, this is the United States. Like, I learned classical music because I was in a Western context. Yeah. And then, oh, this is a cultural context, this is my band, this is Korea. And, you know, the, when we are growing up and we're dealing with identity, which I know that we're familiar with, mm. oh, because we're both with the dash, you yeah, know, yeah. in the middle of our whatever. Then we're like, how do we negotiate these things? And then eventually we come to peace with some part of ourselves that are unified. And I mm. think that was... And so, and so I realized it was artifice, kind of sometimes a divide that we create between materials or cultures. Um, and this is tied to like a larger philosophical question I have about difference, you know, which mm. is part of my practice. Um, and, and, and this, you know, I, I was in Korea just, uh, um, it's so cool that I'm here in this very small place in Portugal, like very remote place that's not Porto, but like here in this, environment because um, I was in Korea, like I, like I said, uh, just last week and I was building the synthesizer for over four weeks and Korea is so uh, technologically advanced, like everything, everything. It, and, and I was having a really interesting conversation with another artist about um, like how like maybe Korea never had a postmodern you know, right. like we talk about postmodern, um, po neoliberal, you know, postcolonial, blah blah blah, and uh, we have. I feel like, I feel like, we just never had a modern period. We went from like Korean War, the shit, very poor, like ma ma ma, to like all of a sudden very wealthy mm. with money that feels quite suspicious you yeah, know yeah. and 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 we're now living occupying this culture that is so um hyper productive high so much media and like as we talked about earlier today like so much content available to everybody and then and then this thing that's kind of this traditional music that's 
before whatever was the absence of modern, you know? And, and so there is that, but I haven't had enough time exploring it to get to the language around it. Yeah, yeah. So this is the moment, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's a, a good way of putting it. And I think, I mean, I've only lived here five years or whatever, and so I, I didn't develop with this country, but um, speaking to one of my Portuguese friends, Sergio, who had done one of the Play Talk plays here, mm. um, he had mentioned that Portugal had gone from like, rural like agrar like uh farming culture to all of a sudden like post-industrial like never having had an industrial revolution or anything like that it's just sort of i mean here it's still pretty um oh, interesting. yeah like it's not as technologically advanced as as korea nor um economically advanced like it's it's still a pretty poor country and stuff like that um but just sort of skipping past what a lot of developmental a lot of developing countries did to develop yeah. Just it, all of a sudden, like, the world is now modern and there's, like, I live in a farm, but with, like, Wi-Fi from the cloud, you know, like, it's like a, you know, it's like a, a, a leap in there in terms of um, yeah. stuff, which is, yeah, quite beautiful. So you are living in a, you are also living in a, a gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> living out a gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe somehow. Yeah, yeah. Which is interesting, and like as I said, like it's not an experience that I had growing up here. But like speaking to the mm -mm. friends who did grow up here, like that, the, some of that is quite palpable. Mm -hmm. You know, like where like you, you know, you grew up, like there's houses with like no running water or power, and that's just how it is. To now, like Airbnbs everywhere, you know, like, yeah, which is not necessarily a good thing, but it like it's uh, they have running water. Yeah, yeah. Well, most of them, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow. I'm so happy you have this talk portion of this <laughs> because it's making me really nice. It's really nice yeah. to touch on these cultural topics, you know, mm. that relate so much to what we do. Yeah. And w with the cultural one, like for me, I, I, I mean, it, it's, it's almost ironic in that like this is a, a Spanish classical guitar that I got from my mom that I think she got in Spain. So like, it, it's like, a, it has a quite direct line to, mm. it's it's kind of cultural context, but not not in the way that I, I mean, I guess I did first learn a little classical guitar when I was younger, but um, it's accidentally uh, in the point that I'm making. But for me, there's a, like a big cultural divide of uh, when I studied classical music and, and like this sort of artifice of Western canonical high art culture and like the the footprint of that um versus things that i kind of do now and i i consciously try to have moved away from that as much as possible and even to the point like i don't have a piano i don't you know like like what my life was with that kind of world of music is largely divorced from it so there's like a a conscious thing there but like interestingly enough this is part of that you know other line there which is yeah, not necessarily oh. intentional. Yeah. Oh, I want to cry. <laughs> cool. I guess this is why we're kind of here. Yeah, together yeah. Together in this moment. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, I mean, it, it wouldn't be on the cameras, but it's also quite beautiful that, like, out the background of the window, it's just, like, misty hills and mountains. It, it's, it's a a poetic scene, um, you know, in situ, at least. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Cool. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool. Hmm.
Bye.